Brothers and sisters, as we come here today, we come fighting a monumental battle against the greatest evil to ever plague this land. And I mean those words exactly. I want to begin by saying that it takes incredible courage for State Representative Danny McCormick to introduce these bills. The reality is that there are very few legislators who would stand directly in the line of fire on this issue. And the reason that I approached Danny was because I realized that he had the guts to stand up when everyone else would be pressuring him to sit down. And just as he has decided to stand, we must do the same. Amen. The reality is, brothers and sisters, we have sat along the sideline as children have been murdered by the millions for too long. And it's time that we bring it to an end. Now, I was trained by this man standing to the right of me over here, Rusty Thomas. Back in 2008, I went to the Planned Parenthood in Waco because God had broken my heart over the murder of these children. And I said, I'm going to go to the nearest abortion clinic and I'm going to go and offer help to those women. And I'm going to present the gospel to them. And as I arrived with my wife, on the sidewalk that morning, there was this crazy man in a cowboy hat leading a group of brothers and sisters in Christ to, as he would say, preach the gospel at the gates of hell. You see, we call abortion clinics the gates of hell because they are the most evil places on earth. They are altars of the pagan god Moloch in our land, where children are offered as living sacrifices upon the altar of convenience. That we would put our own lives and our own comfort before our own children. That we would tear them apart limb from limb rather than us have to bear the inconvenience of raising these little precious ones. It is wicked. And we all know it. Look at the pictures here this morning. When we talk about abortion, that's what we're talking about. And some say you shouldn't show those pictures. I wouldn't understand how evil the Holocaust against Jews was in 1930s and 40s Germany unless I saw the stacks of bodies. I wouldn't be able to grasp what that's like until I saw it with my own eyes. And the same is true of abortion. They are killing children. They are killing children. Louisiana law requires that the Department of Health report how many abortions take place in the three abortion clinics in Louisiana, which are located here in Baton Rouge, in New Orleans, and in Shreveport. And at those three abortion clinics last year in 2021, the Department of Health says that 7,444 babies were legally murdered in our state under our watch. What are we going to do to put an end to it? That's an average of just over 20 babies killed every day. So we've introduced two bills to put a stop to it. HB 344, Defy Roe, says that we do not recognize Roe v. Wade in the state of Louisiana. The Bible calls it an iniquitous decree. It is wicked. It is evil. We will not have children murdered in our state because nine justices 
in robes in D.C. told us that we have to have those children killed. In the 1850s, the Supreme Court said that a black man was nothing more than a piece of property. In the Dred Scott versus Sanford ruling, they said that states in the North had to take escaped slaves and return them to their slave owners in the South. And do you know what the states, the free states did after the Dred Scott ruling? They defied the Dred Scott ruling. They said, we won't do it. It's evil. There is a higher law. The Supreme Court is not the final court. There is a higher court. It is in heaven. And there is one judge there. His name is Jesus Christ. He's not up for re-election. He doesn't need our permission. He is the king of heaven and earth. And we will all stand before him one day soon. And he's going to ask us on that day, what did you do to protect these children? So what are we going to do? If I were to tell you that someone was going to go into a local elementary school and shoot 20 children, murder them in cold blood, would you do something about it? Or would you say, well, that's not my problem. I can't stop it. Would you call anybody? Would you call the police? If they didn't listen, would you go there to stop him? Would you do everything in your power to protect the lives of those 20 children in a local elementary school? If the answer is yes, then the next question I have for you is, are you doing the same to protect 20 children whose lives are just as precious who are being murdered right now, today, in this state? Right now, babies are being dismembered limb from limb. What are we going to do about it? The second bill we've introduced is HB 813. We call it a bill of equal protection. It says this, children in the womb should have the exact same legal protections as all other persons in Louisiana. You murder a child in the womb, you will be charged with the same crime as if you murdered any other innocent person in this state. Abortion is murder, and it's about time we start acting like we really believe it. We say they're human beings from the moment of conception. Then why don't we protect their lives from the moment of conception just like we would anyone else's? Now, I want to thank publicly State Representative Tony Bacala because he has scheduled HB 813 for a hearing this Wednesday at 9 a.m. inside this building. Amen. Representative Bacala ran as a pro-life state representative and he's keeping his word. He's endorsed our bill. And there are over 40 other legislators who've endorsed our bill. We're going to show up this Wednesday at 9 a.m. and I need you with me. I need you in the room. House room number six, 9 a.m. this Wednesday, right here. Fill out a green card in support of our bill. And I, along with others, are going to be testifying in favor of that bill. And the legislators will vote. Are we going to protect children in the womb equally as we do all other persons? Yes or no? And if they vote no, the blood of those babies will be on those legislators' hands. But there's another bill, HB 344, that I mentioned earlier, Defy Roe. And I hate to tell you this, but there is a pro-life politician, State Representative Gregory Miller, who is the chair of the House Civil Law Committee. And though he ran telling his constituents he would end abortion in our state, he is stonewalling our bill and will not schedule it for a hearing. Now, over the past few months, I've made repeated pleas to Representative Miller, and he's yet to schedule the bill. And I am publicly calling out State Representative Gregory Miller. Either schedule it for a hearing or tell your constituents you lied to them and you aren't truly pro-life. 
Which is it? I don't want to hear excuses. There is no more urgent matter than children being killed every day in this state. And it's time that our legislators do their job, which they promised to do, and put an end to it now. Amen. Now you may know that I have worked in the pro-life industry in the state of Louisiana for the past eight years five years of which I was a staff member for the largest pro-life organization in our state. And for a number of reasons I left that position and one of those was that I am absolutely convinced that we must be bold. We cannot peel abortion back layer by layer. We cannot wait on permission from the Supreme Court to protect these babies. I had some Pro-life leaders, as they are called, plead with me to get Representative McCormick to pull these bills. It's not the right time. Let's wait and see what happens in June when the Supreme Court decides Dobbs. Meanwhile, 20 babies are being murdered every day. And so I was asked, well, just wait till next session, next year. I said, oh. That will only cost us the lives of 7,444 more babies. I'm sorry, that's a price I'm not willing to pay. I won't bargain with their lives. Furthermore, we do have a trigger law in the state of Louisiana. It was passed in 2006. It's called the Human Life Protection Act. And this bill has been touted. But do you know what happens if Roe gets overturned in June? Do you know what the effect will be in Louisiana? Yes, abortion will be banned. Do you know what the penalty will be? A $1,000 fine for the abortionist. It's a little bit more than a speeding ticket. A $1,000 fine for the abortionist. Do you know what the fine is for cruelty to animals? If you kill a puppy in this state, do you know what the fine is? $25,000. So if we overturn Roe, we'll finally be able to value the lives of puppy dogs 25 times more than the life of a human being in the womb. That is absurd. That is not enough. We need to pass HB 813 and make the crime for killing a baby equal to the crime of murdering any other human. And we need to pass HB 344, Defy Roe, to require the state of Louisiana and all of its officials and all of its offices and all of its authorities to enforce those laws. Amen. Now people tell us, well, you can't do this. The Supreme Court is the law of the land. We can't defy Roe. First off, it's been done before in American history. But second off, and more importantly, it's what God commands us to do. Now Peter and John, when they were preaching the gospel in the book of Acts, they were arrested and imprisoned. And if you read the story in Acts 3, 4, and 5, an angel broke them out of prison and they went right back into the temple and kept preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they were arrested again and the authorities said, we strictly charge you to no longer speak in the name of Jesus Christ. And Peter and John looked at those government officials and they said in Acts 5 verse 29, we must obey God rather than men. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it's very simple. We must end abortion now. No excuses, no exceptions. The same crime as murdering any other human. We must end it now. We cannot wait. I will not listen to excuses from politicians. We end it now because we must obey God rather than men. May Jesus Christ, the King of heaven and earth, give us the victory in his name. Amen. Amen.